Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, a very warm welcome to the People for Public Services Forum. Uh, today we're uh, talking about preparing for adulthood, and we have Carmel to give us a presentation on that. So I'm going to start by just uh, reminding everybody who the People for Public Services are. And here are some pictures of us. These are pictures taken in former times when COVID-19 didn't keep us all apart. And you can see that we uh, have been active in getting together and talking to one another and considering important things that are important to us all for looking after one another in our community. I'm um, an ordinary person, as are all these people here, uh, and we are ordinary but also special because we have, I'm, I'm a carer and other people have various specialities according to how they live their lives, and we come together to try and help the council to do better things for the people that they are working for. So now, without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to June Marshall, the cu Customer Experience Manager for Adult Social Care, and take it away, June. Thank you, Fiona, and apologies, everybody. I don't think you can actually see a picture of me, um, and that's not because I didn't want to be on camera. Um, that's actually because my laptop's decided um, that it's not going to work the camera this afternoon. So that's a call for me for IT following this meeting. So what we um, what we're going to talk to you about today, obviously Fiona's already mentioned the people the um, preparing for adulthood team, which is absolutely fantastic. We're using the virtual forum um, as of, for obvious reasons, we're not able to get everybody into one room together. Um, we are obviously very conscious that this does prevent some of our citizens joining us. It does prevent some of our citizens getting involved. Um, but it's a new format, new challenges. We're very conscious that we want to keep everybody safe. So we're not pulling everybody into the into a big meeting room. And if we did, I think the numbers that we'd be able to have was, would be so restrictive um, at this point in time that it would, wouldn't add any value. So the improvements in the new format is we're doing everything online and what you've got here is um, an opportunity still to raise questions, raise points, raise discussion issues with colleagues who are going to be doing the presentation. So if you go into the middle menu bar, there is an opportunity to raise questions um, and you can ask anything. No question is a silly question. Um, and what we'll do towards the end of the session is actually read some of those questions out live and ask some of the speakers to actually respond to you. So all you do is type your comment in it, um, type your question in it. If it's targeted to a certain person, please do um, put in which person you'd like to respond to you. Um, it's really good to have you all here today um, and we do hope that you join in. What I will also tell you is that the film from today, because these sessions are recorded, and also the questions that are raised are all responded to and they are all populated onto our website. So they are available for everybody to see afterwards. I'm now going to hand you over, I believe, to Carmel and Jacqueline. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, June. Um, I'm just checking my mic is working. If somebody could give me a wave to let me know that because it says it's currently on muting. I can hear you, Carmel. Oh, brilliant. Great. Thanks, June. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, special thanks to the People for Public Services Forum and to Fiona for allowing us to come this afternoon to talk to you about the new preparation for adulthood strategy that is uh, currently being rolled out um, across the city. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague Jackie isn't able to be with us today, so I'm going to do the presentation in two parts. So there'll be an opportunity for questions or comments um, in the middle. Um, so the preparation for adulthood strategy, why, why are we having a preparation for adulthood strategy? So we know that uh, for young people as they approach adulthood, lots and lots of young people um, experience challenges and barriers to them being able to move forward into the kind of adulthood they'd wish to have. And obviously for a lot of young people in the city, those challenges and barriers are um, extremely difficult. And um, particularly for young people with special 
special educational needs or disability and for young people who are impacted by um, childhood trauma that means that it's going to be difficult for them to um, move into the kind of adulthood that will enable them to have a rich and fulfilling life uh, without without a level of support and also could leave them vulnerable to things like uh, child sexual exploitation, domestic abuse, drug and alcohol use and um, offending behaviours. Uh, so we are um, looking to work with young people and engage with young people across the city so that we are able to um, support them into the kind of adulthood that they wish to have. Uh, so who are we? Well, we are uh, part of Birmingham City Council. Uh, we sit within adult social care, but we're a bridge between the adult social care and Birmingham Children's Trust. And we're also working alongside the uh, Birmingham Solihull Clinical Commissioning Group. So we're well embedded in those structures within um, the city, and it gives us an opportunity to be able to feed um, back to senior management across those organisations uh, the what we are finding as we're working with young people across the city and the kinds of things that we think need to be changed or made different. Uh, the so what is our vision for the young people that we're going to be working with? We want every young person in Birmingham to have um, a rich and fulfilling adult life and we want to be able to support them to overcome the issues that they are currently facing that um, make that difficult for them. We are very much about people having equal chances. We don't want a sort of two, three, four tier system where young people aren't able to take advantage of the opportunities that others have because of issues that have um, either because of disability, uh, learning disability or because of issues that they've experienced as children. Uh, we want um, the young people we're working with and their families to be at the centre of all the planning that we are going to be doing to support um, them to transition into um, adulthood and to ensure that they are fully involved and at the centre of everything that we do. Uh, we want to ensure that um, people are able to have the right information and support in a timely manner to give them time to uh, think about what they would like to do, uh, what is available and to make some decisions without um, them at all having to be very rushed or um, that they've got actually opportunities to explore what their options might be. And we're very committed to ensuring that nobody gets left behind. So it's very much about young people across Birmingham being supported to be able to have the kinds of adulthoods we would all like um, for, our, for ourselves and for our own children. Um, so how are we going to achieve this vision. So the preparation for adulthood strategy has been um, introduced. There are three parts to that. I'm part of the integrated transitions team and we are going to be working with young people, um, supporting them across our four outcomes that I'll refer to um, later and uh, ensuring that uh, any issues or aspirations and dreams that they have, we're helping them uh, to achieve. Uh, we're going to be supporting them uh, to develop something called a community circle of support and I'll come back to that later in the presentation. We're currently, the preparation for adulthood strategy is currently a pilot that is running until March 2022 and as part of that, you know, this we might come back with a presentation that will look very different to this in a year's time to speak to the Public uh, Services Forum because um, we will be changing and adapting um, our uh, offer and what we're doing as we uh, start to work with young people across the city and their families um, and to see what uh, kinds of things they want us to actually be able to do and what we're uncovering as we're doing that work. Uh, there has been a commitment to um, a firm Further three years of funding provided we're able to demonstrate that we're able to make a positive impact in the lives of the young people we're working with and we're very optimistic and confident that that will be the case. We are very much an additional service so we're a non-statutory service um, we are not replacing anybody. We're in addition to, not instead of. So if you are involved in um, teams or with services that already exist within the council, we are not replacing any of those. This is an additional service to support young people uh, towards adulthood. Thank you, Simon. 
So that's the first half of the presentation. So very happy to take any comments, questions um, and thoughts about uh, what we've said so far. So Carmel, we've just had one question in so far, actually. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, can. Brilliant. So the question is, how um, do you interact with other groups within the city for young people? How are we going to interact? Well, um, we've been in post since the middle of May. Uh, we've been uh, talking to lots of services, both within the council, uh, outside the council, within um, the health service, within the combined authority and lots of lots of community organisations as well. And um, we are trying to kind of spread the word far and wide. We spent August doing um, a, a presentation similar to this one to basically anybody who'd listened to us. We've been out talking to uh, lots of different people, answering questions, and we're hoping that um, you will also help us to spread the word uh, that the people attending the forum today will um, you know, be interested in more information and be able to tell anybody that they think in their local communities or in their homes that they think might benefit from our service about it and how to connect to us. Thank you, Carmel. Um, and the next question I can answer, actually. So, Sadie, you've asked if you're able to get the presentation to share with teams following today's event. A simple, straightforward answer is yes. We will share this presentation with you. Um, as Carmel said, she's very keen to get the message spread far and wide. So, yes, absolutely, that will be with you later on today. And we haven't had any further questions in, so I suggest you carry on, Carmel, because I'm sure there'll be more. I'll have a sip of water before I go on. So how is the preparation for adulthood um, teams going to be working? Well, we're very much focused on what the young person wants. We're not about um, these are, you know, you've, you've reached um, a certain age. These are your four options. Which of these four options do you want to have? We want to be able to work, as we said, with the young person at the centre of any planning uh, that we are doing and the, and the work that we are doing to ensure that what we are supporting them to achieve is what they actually want to do and what they want to have in their adulthood um, as they transition into it. Uh, we're very much about raising aspirations. We want all the young people across Birmingham with additional needs to be to have aspirations, to have goals and dreams that we are going to help them to um, to realise. I mean, obviously there, you know, it's it's not going to be a straightforward process, but we will be there to support them to um, to achieve what um, what what it is that they would like to um, work towards. Um, we're also going to be in terms of kind of connections and we're, we're going to be system connectors. So we want to be able to kind of connect families and services um, into a, a to each other to ensure that um, young people and their families have a, have the right information and are aware of all the vast range of things that are available across the city that they might be able to uh, make use of. Um, and in addition to being system connectors, we're very much about system change as well. So in addition to working directly with young people and their families, we will also be feeding back to senior management changes that we think would be helpful or difficulties that there are in the system that make it difficult for young people. So we're very much about co-producing and um, this presentation today we've co-produced with the citizen engagement panel. So we're very much about making sure that everything is joined up, uh, working with families at the centre and um, ensuring that uh, the young persons needs and what they want to achieve is centre to all our all the planning and um, work that's going on. And because we're a non-statutory service, we are actually able to go and to spend more time and be able to support um, the young young people and their families in a different, in a slightly different way. So we are hoping to be able to work very closely in conjunction with our colleagues in statutory services. Thank you, Simon. So how are we going to how are we going to know that we're making change? So we're we're concentrating on four specific outcomes. We're looking at health, um, housing, employment, and friends, relationships, and communities. And everybody who makes an inquiry to us, we want them to be able to identify um, some issues or goals that the young person has in relation to these four outcomes, so that we are able to demonstrate um, with the time that we spent with them and working to help them to support uh, 
getting these issues resolved or their goals realised that we're able to make a difference. So that is how we're going to measure uh, what we're doing. And we're concentrating very much around these four um, outcomes, which obviously are very broad and kind of encompass um, a lot of the, uh, the aspects of a young person's life that is going to impact them as they move towards adulthood. Thank you. So who who will we be able to support? So we're going to be supporting young people aged 14 to 25, which is a change in the ages that the age range that has pre that historically we've been uh, supporting young people in with transition to adulthood in. So um, we are going to be supporting young people with special educational needs and disability, uh, young people who've been identified as being vulnerable or in need of support through statutory health or social care assessments, uh, young people who because of childhood trauma may be vulnerable as adults and that vulnerability may continue to impact them as adults if they don't receive early support and help to overcome that. Uh, and we're also going to be supporting young people who are carers. Uh, one of the unique features of our offer is that um, if we start to work with someone and there are siblings aged between 16 and 25 in the household, we are also able to engage and work with siblings to support them should they wish to do it. But we are in by invitation uh, service, so it's very much for young people to decide whether they want to engage with us or not. Uh, there is no, they don't have to do so, and it would be the same for their siblings. But, you know, we recognise that um, working with a young person uh, who has siblings who are impacted by some of the same issues isn't, you know, because we're about wanting to be able to sustain the change that we're helping to make and ensure that's consolidated and follows through with them. So being able to work with siblings will help support that. So obviously we've had to look at uh, you know where we start and as say we're in a pilot so this may well change but currently we've identified an, a number of groups of young people who we're not currently going to be able to support so and that includes young people requiring palliative care uh, people with life limiting conditions and complex uh, long-term conditions and any young people who are currently in custody or in the secure estate in a young offenders institution or secure children's home, for example. But of course, being a pilot, this may that may change, but this is where we're starting from. Uh, and we're very much about not wanting to say, sorry, we're not going to help you. So we will be offering to signpost or to um, offer alternative support in situations where um, there is already a plan in place for a, a young person that includes our four outcomes I referred to earlier. So we're not in a position to be able to kind of duplicate work, but we want to um, ensure that we are getting to the people who most, the young people who most need it. So if it's if something's already in place that includes our four outcomes, we, we would be signposting people to sort of alternative um, places or offering them um, the opportunities to engage in other services or indeed where a service already has specific specialists and posts. So, for example, we have a dedicated employment officer. We have a dedicated housing officer. You know, if a service already had people in similar posts to that, but required help around employment or housing, then we wouldn't uh, we would be offering, you know, to signpost them. And uh, we're also not going to be able to uh, work with a young carer who hasn't had a carer's assessment completed in the last 12 months. But obviously what we, we would be wanting to ensure in this instance is that the carer's assessment is completed so that the young person can access um, the support that's available to young carers across the city. So we have a very uh, wide range of people who can contact us. Uh, we're not talking about referrals, we're talking about connections. So as you see, this is just uh, as a, you know, a snapshot of the range of people who are able to um, connect young people to us, but I'd like to draw your attention specifically to young people are actually able to refer themselves. They can, they can contact us, as can their parents or carers and family members. 
Um, so we and again, this th that list isn't exhaustive. Now, obviously, COVID-19 has had a huge impact on all our lives. And as a service, a starting a new service, we obviously haven't been. Uh, we've only just started to engage with young people from the 1st of September. So we've been working, looking at four separate work streams across the directorates that the Birmingham City Council uh, Strategic Life Course Board have asked us to look at. So we've been looking at uh, youth custody, uh, and what support is there. We've been looking at supported accommodation, particularly around houses of multiple occupancy and the vulnerability of people who are living there. We've been looking at community circles of support and we've been looking at the day opportunities that are available across the city. Um, I'm going to come back quickly to the community circles of support because the community circles of support is something that we are going to help each young person we are working with um, provided that they wish to do so, to uh, develop their own circle of support whilst we are working with them. The idea being that the circle will be an ongoing source of support for the young person, both to help them sort out any issues that may arise, but also help them kind of uh, achieve their goals and aspirations on a more long term basis. Uh, the circle is very much in the young, the young person is in control of the circle. They decide who is part of their circle of support, where and when they meet. And um, the circle is going to be facilitated by a trained facilitator. And we're currently in the process of identifying a training partner to be able to offer that training to people. And what we are looking to do is to recruit facilitators in the communities that young people live in to be able to kind of take, you know, support the young person to take their kind of uh, issues, their goals, their dreams and help turn them into action and use their community circle of support as an ongoing long term uh, source of um, guidance and um, somebody that they can go to when there are issues that um, are causing them some uh, some difficulties. So and that is the end of the presentation. So thank you very much. Um, are there any further questions, June? Oh, or yes, Carmel, there's some coming in now. Right. So okay. some of them um, we've answered. So one of the questions was what age group are we going to be working with? Yeah. But then you covered it in the next slide. And then though, the next question was, how are you defining um, young people? What's the eligibility? But again, you can't you contact you confirm that as well. Yeah. Um, so the next question, which I couldn't answer, is um, what about young people with no families? Yeah, well, the um, we will obviously be working with young people with no families that not having a family is is not a bar to us being able to work with you. But um, we would have to ensure that, you know, you were uh, we were able to work with you around our four outcomes. We have to be able to identify that there are that there is work to be done around those. And really, that's that, you know, that isn't that isn't a bar to um, us working with somebody, as we said. Um, it was just that we are very much aware that uh, the young people we work, we work with, we want to be able to kind of include their families, their parents and carers. If there are if there are parents and carers, but for example, if we had um, young, you know, a uh, loan asylum, you know, young people who were loan asylum seekers or anything, uh, somebody who was on their own for whatever reason, then obviously we are still able to build a connection with them, provided our four there is work to be done around our four outcomes. Perfect. Thank you, Carmel. Next question we have is, sorry, I missed the very beginning of the presentation. Do you have connections with the virtual schools? And that question is from Sadie Hughes. Um, we have been a lot of groundwork has obviously been done around um, services and Linda Harper is our strategic lead. To be honest, I would expect that is the case, but I couldn't say for definite, but I will double check and come back to you. Perfect. Next question then. Nothing like putting you on the spot this afternoon, that's, Carmel. That's OK, I knew that was <laughs> happened. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. How would your team be working with housing needs? Will you be providing accommodation or supporting the person to obtain a property? And what will be the follow up? And that's from Nina. Right, so um, we there's three parts to the preparation for adulthood strategy there's ourselves as the integrated transitions team there is go, there is in the process of being put, currently put together a vulnerable adults team and then there is also a transitions hub which is going to be commissioned um 
to uh, across the city. Uh, now, the Transitions Hub will be focusing on young people who are either homeless or at risk of homelessness and the plan to date. But again, as I say, we're in a pilot, so this is subject to, to change and alteration um, is that the Transitions Hub will include some accommodation. So we will hopefully be able to support young people. I mean, we're very aware of how what in what a um, difficult issue uh, obtaining housing is across the city, but we will be able to support young people with applications and been able to hopefully kind of move towards um, a property. And this is where their circle of support will come in, because once we're going to work with young people in three month and 12 month blocks, depending on what the, what they want us to to be supporting them with. And um, once we have finished working, the community circle of support will be able to kind of continue to support them with issues around um, some of, you know, housing, health, some of the issues we've arisen. But we're very aware that having said that, um, that, you know, housing is um, a very uh, real issue in the city and being able to obtain suitable properties. But we are looking at the whole issue of kind of supported accommodation as part of the COVID-19 work we've been doing. Um, so we will, as I say, I'm sorry, this is a rather roundabout way of answering it. Uh, there hopefully will be an element of accommodation available through the Transitions Hub. Uh, we do have a housing solutions broker as part of our team. So it's somebody with a dedicated remit to support housing and uh, we will be doing everything we can to ensure that young people are moving into appropriate housing where they are going to be uh, safe and it's going to be sustainable. Thanks, Carmel. We've got um, so following nicely on from that comment. So Joanne Spence is on from Trident Reach. Hello. So Joanne said um, Trident Reach is a commission provider of lead worker support and accommodation for young people and would welcome involvement with the preparation for adulthood team. Brilliant. That's great Brilliant. news. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Your next question, um, I think you may have just covered it. Um, supported accommodation would what would be your team's roles and responsibilities in the process of working with the person? Um, well, we're a non-statutory team, so we're uh, there by invitation. So we will work with young people for as long as they want to continue to work with us. And our role would be to not to do, you know, to work with rather than do for. Um, so we'd be working with the young person to help kind of identify what kind of um, housing they would be interested in obtaining what the issues might be around that and ensuring that they've kind of we spent a lot of time looking uh, through kind of potential uh, problems that might arise ensuring that people have um, are building independent living skills and um, understand you know about rent etc etc um, but uh, and the as I say the the plan at the moment is that the transitions hub will have an element of accommodation in it so that uh, young people who are particularly vulnerable will have the opportunity to um, to utilise that. Um, but uh, again, that's sort of in the process of being put of put together. We, you know, we're a very new service, so um, we're we're just kind of finding our feet, as it were. Brilliant. Does, does that answer your question? I think so. Um, so the next question, Carmel, is what are the three strands of the strategy? OK, so the three strands of the strategy is ourselves as the integrated transitions team. We're going to be working with uh, young people aged 14 to 25. We're going to be working with their siblings if they're aged between 16 and 25. And the other the other unique element of our service is that somebody doesn't need to have a diagnosis in order to uh, be able to access us. So it may be that you have behaviour that would lend itself to a particular diagnosis. You may be in a process of awaiting a diagnosis or you may feel you've been incorrectly diagnosed. We will still be able to work with you provided, as I say, that we're able to identify things within our four outcomes that um, we're able to support you with. Um, the other two strands of the Transitions Hub, which I've referred to, that's going to be a commission service still sort of in its infancy. Um, and the vulnerable adults team are going to be working particularly with um, young people who've been the sub subjected to trauma of some of some kind in their childhood, who without sort of early support and intervention will uh, make it 
you know, that that trauma will continue to cause issues for them throughout um, their adult life and mean that they have to keep coming back into uh, services or require possibly things like acute mental health intervention. So we're very much about, er, you know, early working with people early to try and, ha and um, prevent um, some of the huge challenges that a lot of the young people across the city experience not being the thing that prevents them being able to have a rich and fulfilling adulthood. Lovely. Got some more questions from you. So Nikki Petit, I believe that's, I hope that's how I've pronounced that correctly. Nikki's commented three times, so I'm going to do all three together for you because I think they're okay. all linked. So Nikki works at UHB. Yes. How can we signpost the opportunity and raise awareness of the great service you are offering? And can we help with the health outcome at all? Oh, right. OK. Um, uh, yes, yes and yes. Um, the um, yeah, we'll uh, be sharing some uh, information with um, at, once we finish the questions about how to contact us and we'll certainly um, be interested in people uh, both helping to connect young people to us and if they feel there's um, aspects of their service that would uh, lend itself to us then absolutely we're we you know we want to be able to kind of connect uh, people up we want to be working in a joined up uh, way where um you know we've we've got a lot of kind of creativity we've got a lot of opportunity to really make a real difference here and um and we're a very determined and passionate team and claire moby who's our team lead is uh, is is on the forum today and um i'm sure she would agree with that we're very determined that we're going to be a success uh, because it will make such a huge difference to the young people across birmingham brilliant Next question from Nikki was, have you linked in with the Prince's Trust? Uh, yes, we have. Our employment uh, uh, officer has has had uh, meetings with the Prince's Trust. We have. Okay. But if you think that there are, if you have a particular person you think it would be helpful for us to uh, to speak with them, please obviously do come back. It's a big organisation. Um, I know our um, employment um, officer has had connections, you know, meetings with them, but it may be that there's another aspect of the Prince's Trust we could meet with. So please, we'd rather, know to, you know, have too many people than not enough. So please, if you think there's somebody useful, please do let us know. Fantastic. So um, another question from Nikki was, how will you advertise the opportunity to become part of a community circle? Will the people have to be local? It may be something that we can advertise through the trust. I think pl plenty of people would be interested to volunteer and take part and support. That's brilliant. Thank you. Well, um, that's certainly what we're very hopeful for, Nikki, is that um, people will volunteer. We're in the process of putting some information together. Uh, we've we've uh, the the so we've had some bids in for the facilitation training they're currently being looked at um, we are very keen that it is local we want the um, young person to be able to have particularly the facilitator who is who has lived experience of the same uh, communities that the young people across uh, the city uh, live in so that they're able to build a real relationship of trust that is hopefully as long term as any of us can make uh, long term plans and be a, a kind of a constant in that young person's life during this very, you know, um, uh, challenging kind of time to enable them to be able to kind of go on, as we say, and have um, the kinds of adulthoods we would all want. We would want for every child, every young person across the city. So um, absolutely, if you think that um, people across the trust would be interested, um, we'll please do get in contact with us and we will uh, keep you updated as we have more information. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Nikki. So my next question is, um, somebody's asked if uh, we want, Alan has asked if we want a partner organisation that could help house young people. I think that's a conversation with you directly afterwards when you put up who, how people get in contact with the team. Yeah, it is. Um, there is also somebody else asking if there's a direct contact to get involved with the team. How can we get involved? So that's really positive. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Sadie yeah. Hughes um, has commented and said, I work for Bernardo's with some of the young people you may be able to support or work in partnership to support. How yes. can you let me let you know what we are doing? Um, we're very happy to meet with um, with you, um, Sadie. That would be that would be great. We have met with the um, 
uh, somebody already from Bernardo's uh, around the, their employment offer, but very happy to meet uh, with people and share. We're very much about getting our message as far and wide across the city. What we absolutely want to ensure is that anybody who would like to have, make a connection to the service knows that we're there and is able to make it. And similarly, if people want to help and support in any way, uh, work together, be able to kind of form, um, you know, uh, networks, be able to uh, link families in to organisations and help they may not already be aware of. We're absolutely up for all of that. So thank you. That's great. I'm, I feel really good, really passionate now. You know, thank <laughs> you so much. It's great to, that people are so um, enthusiastic and positive about it. That really we're getting awesome. some fantastic, yeah, fantastic yeah, comments through to, to the team. So, Carmel, we'll just going to another question. We haven't got many more in now. You'll be pleased to know. Um, what skills would we be offering for initial independent living skills? Um, well, as I said, we have a, a housing a person as part of our um, team and she has extensive experience of supporting young people with independent living skills but we'd also want to be able to help connect young people into support that might be in their community to help them to develop and consolidate those skills um, so yeah we're um, you know if if you're asking that because you think there is something that uh, you may be able to do to help with that then please do get um, get in contact with us you know we're very very aware that um, we're, you know, there's going to be a lot of young people out there requiring uh, support. Uh, we want to make sure that the work that we're doing is um, positive, moving young people in the right direction and sustainable, that it's, you know, which is where the community circle of support will be able to come in and offer further help. But we're also very aware that there may well be people out there, you know, who might not want to necessarily train as facilitators, but could be part of somebody's circle of support uh, to be able to help them with issues like independent living, you know, um, uh, accessing the job centre, accessing, you know, uh, community services, any, anything like that. Yeah, what we're what we're really hoping to do is be able to build on the absolutely incredible uh, response there has been across this city to uh, lockdown and people supporting uh, citizens through uh, during COVID-19. That has literally been just the most amazing response um, on behalf of um, people across the city. So we're hoping to be able to build on that so that uh, people are able to kind of support young people with additional needs in their own communities. Great. So I've got um, a comment more than a question from Sadiq. Thank you, Sadiq. Young people need mentoring by a mentor and mentors who are trained and qualified. Yeah. I think that goes without saying, and I know there is yes. training planned for those people. Um, I've got a... Uh, so I've got another comment now from Rose. Rose Rees, as an employer in the rail and construction sector, offender friendly we would like to help with career information advice and guidance if needed brilliant uh, can i ask rose then if you will just uh, send your details to one of the uh, emails that are up on the screen at the moment i'm carmel Cork. i think i forgot to actually to properly introduce myself at the beginning telling you at the end and um the uh, and we're very happy to kind of pass that on to our employment uh, officer and to Walter so that he can follow that up. Thank you so much. That would be that would be great. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of all the questions that have been posed. But if anybody just wants to look at the published Q and A's that are on on screen now, there is also the generic email. Um, address for the team also in the email box, in addition to all of the others that are on screen. That's all the questions from me. So I think, do I hand back to Fiona? Is Fiona taking it back now? Thank you, Carmel. That was thank really good. You, yeah, thank you, June. Thank you. And can I just say thank you very much to everybody. That's been so lovely to have so many positive comments and offers of help. You're just amazing. We're really, um, you know, we fit, we feel really passionate about it. We we really want to be able to support young people across the city, and you've just been able to demonstrate um, how helpful and uh, willing you are to help us on that journey. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Carmel. I think. Um, the response that you've had demonstrates what an inspiring presentation you've given us all. And I think it also shows um, 
uh, and I hope everybody else in the meeting feels the same, how, how inspiring it is when everybody gets together and tries to work uh, as a community. Um, I hope that that's what you all take away from this meeting, that you're all looking forward to doing things for the preparing for adult services and that you will all be looking out for future meetings of people for public services where we hope to get more and more people to come in and to have their say and to do their bits and to join up with everybody else. Um, if you would like to give us feedback on how, how you felt about this meeting today, were they good? what were the good bits, what were the bad bits, anything we might be able to do to improve this new digital scenario. Um, we will be very pleased to hear about that. And uh, so I would just like to repeat that I hope you've all had a good experience and tell you that our next forum, uh, hang on, Simon, our next forum is Tuesday the 6th of October, 2 to 3 p.m. So look out for our subject. And so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Fiona. And sorry to interrupt. The 13th of October. Sorry about that. Oh, that's the 13th. Oh, right. So ignore that slide. Tuesday the 13th of October, so look out for it, listen up, do do get along, come along and join us all and uh, let's do this together. Thank you for coming and have a good day.